what I'm seeing more and more <laughs> glaringly, I guess you would say. And of course, in my own case, the battles that I've been fighting personally, and I, and I know that it's part of God's plan for my life, and that seems to be contrary to what anybody else would think, but if I didn't know that, I would, <laughs> I'd be in trouble. But more and more I'm seeing and, uh, is that the big lacking things is discerning the body of Christ. It's totally missing. I was watching Derek Prince the night, night before last I was, and there he was. I think he was in England, in his home country, and teaching, and he teaches clearly and so forth, like a college professor. And God bless Derek, and like, he, like I said, I met him, he prayed with me, and we, we, anyway. I'm thankful for the influence he's had on my life. And to a degree, on the body of Christ. But so many men that I've known of through the years now, well, from what little I know since I came into the flow of the Holy Spirit and got out of denominational flow, is they saw the need for the church to be shepherds, and they start out there, and then they leave, and they become itinerant ministries. All of them worldwide. I've been around the world. And I want to say, now, I want to say, because I thought that was for me too. But now I look back and say, so what? So you go somewhere like India and 10,000 people show up. What do they show up for? The loaves and the fishes. Do they low? Do they show up to see, hey, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be a part of the body of Christ. I want to find a group that what I can be submitted to and we, we can become a functioning body and we can do the warfare and bring down the principalities and powers and bring the kingdom to the earth. Have you? No. That's what it's all about. And God showed me. And there it is. I taught it last uh, what was it? Because you don't discern the body. You're weak. Many of you are weak. Weak how? Weak spiritually. Weak physically. S some of you are sick. Many of you are sick. Not some. And some have even died. Is that not the essence of it? Or not? To get people to come together get their lives cleaned up to where they can agape, really truly agape one another and get compact. They're in the Psalms, in the Psalms of Ascent, I forget which one, which one it is. It begins in Psalm 120. And one of them says, Jerusalem is a city compact together. What's he mean by that? They're knit. They're tight. They don't break ranks. They see themselves as important because they're a unit, not a one-man show. They're not an audience. They're not on KP, so to speak. They're a unit, and we, they have a purpose together, and they see it, and they realize they have authority, and the more they're unified and together in this agape flow, the more authority if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Look at us. Back off, Satan. Back off, you demons. You principalities, we're not afraid of you. Who do you think you are? You're defeated. Let's make a declaration to them. Look at you. Yeah, look at us. Yeah. You're, you're in agreement. You're, wow. You see what I'm saying? And look out there. 
It's an entertainment system. Oh, you ought to hear the music. Whoa, the musicians we got. Wow. Wow. And boy, these, these teachings. Wow. Look at the. So what? If we can't sit in here and love each other, so what? I could be the greatest teacher on the face of the earth. So what? You know what teachers did in the book of Corinthians? It divided everybody. You know what the apostles said? I'm concerned for you. You're, you're, you're still immature because you're divided by it. I'd rather hear Apollos. No, or I'd rather hear Paul. No, get Peter in here. Yep. Division, division. Derek Prince, huh, you know, whoever. That's not what it's all about. Derek is dead. He can't do what needs to be done now. My videos can't do what needs to be done. I can't do what God wants me to do except right here in this place. And I can't do it without you. And my job as a shepherd would be to help you get cleaned up and free enough that we can accompany one another perfectly Amen. without any glitches. I don't like this or I'm kind of concerned about that. We'll, we'll, never, get th we'll never get there. We'll not, it'll never happen. Until some group of people somewhere come together and become his ecclesia. And the gates of hell cannot endure against it. But right now the gates of hell are winning without the authority. They're just, nobody's stopping me. It's just like people going down the street, I'd sit there and watch them. Vroom! Why did they do that? Because no policeman's here. We shouldn't need a policeman out here. We shouldn't need a yellow flashing sign when school I mean, we, we shouldn't need any of that except for the independence and rebellion. And what do they? Stop them. Stop them, yeah. Are you a Christian? Oh, yeah. I go to, you do. I belong to, you do. What's missing? What's missing? Huh? Well, what's going on that they claim to be this? but they don't act it out in their life. I remember when the Lord spoke to me, and he said, drive the speak limit. When you don't, you're rebelling against me as well as your authorities, because I set the authorities in there, and you may not like their law, but I'm in charge. And if you want to honor me, you need to obey the authorities. Now, I know there's limits to that because I read last night that Biden is trying to get another strain of vaccine and, and require that everybody take it. Bring it on. Bring it on. And it could well happen the way things are right now. See. Now that they're censoring even the social media you know, we're not going to let you play that on her. What? So, uh, it's coming down to the crux of it. And we know already that the COVID thing costs hundreds, if not thousands, of church groups to shut down. What? What? Yeah. They, so here we are. Here we are. This time it's not the Roman Empire or the Pharisees. <laughs> so, praise God, I, I, I want you to see this. See, look at us here. Look at us here. Okay? Now, like I say, I know what to do to fill this room. I know what to do. It can be done. But it wouldn't be the Lord. 
The Lord's looking for people that want to see that, hey, I got to get this stuff out of me. I gotta, I've got demons. I need to get rid of them. Why? So I can feel better? No. So I can have more peace? No. So I can flow in agape. So I can really, really, really obey the commandments. This is my commandment that you agape one another. Not phileo. Not eros, but agape. Okay? And I realized, boy, that's a challenge. But that's the ultimate challenge. Because if I can't agape you, let me not deceive myself that I can agape him. But I can't. And the book of John says that very clear. First John. You know, don't say you love God. And don't love your brother. Oh, yeah. boy, that's tough. You know what the dude did to me? Okay. You know what my dad did to me? My mother did to me, but. So can we get there or not? Do we need another word from the Lord? What else can he say to us? What else can he say to us? Think about it. Oh, Lord, we want to hear from you. For the 40th time? <laughs> How many times have we heard him say it to us here on Sunday morning? Yeah. Get rid of your fear. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Well, duh. Okay. What else does he need to say to us? No. What are we doing with, you know, what's going on in us? Uh, what are we hiding? What are we doing all week as compared to what we do in here on Sunday morning? That's the critical question. So either we're submitted, committed, or not. It's like this rededication thing that I'm. It's a, it's a horrible joke. Rededicate? And they invented that out there. The Baptists said, I used to do it. There's one song I would say, I play that one. I forget the number of it in the Baptist hymnal, but uh, I've wandered far away from God and now I'm coming home. Play it again. Anybody need to rededicate their life? I'd stand up there, you know. Here would come one or two. You know, boo -hoo. I'm going to rededicate my life. When the hell are you going to dedicate your life? Pardon my French. But I couldn't see it. You're going to dedicate or not? You can't rededicate if you understand what I'm saying. So let's get dedicated. Let's get committed. Where are you going to go from here? Where are we going to go from here with what we know? We know about demons. We know about the Holy Spirit. We know about the gifts. We know a great measure of the truth of this word. So where are you going to go? What are you going to do with it? One thing I know you can't just walk away from it. And I'm going to say this, without consequences. And I'm not trying to put fear on somebody. There's one fear we need, a, the fear of God. Because we're all going to stand before him. And I can't imagine what that's going to be like. But we all, all of us, Everybody is going to stand before the judgment seat. Some of Christ, and then others, the judgment seat of God, the throne of God. And I pray that when I stand before the beam of the judgment seat of Christ, that I judge myself 
And he's going to be able to say, well done, son. Enter into my kingdom. Some are going to be raised from the dead that died in sleep until that great white throne judgment. And the book's going to be brought out. Of course, in eternity, time doesn't matter. But if you can imagine the billions and billions of souls, each one individually, will stand before the great white throne and receive the reward for their life. I, it's hard to even imagine. But that's what this is. So let me go back to this. I was thinking this morning about this because you go back and, and we would say 6,000 years ago, 4,000 until Jesus came and then 2,000 since the, he came to establish his church. And we're on the verge now of the millennium, which would be the 7,000 here. And of course, the seventh year, the land rests and all that sort of thing. Was there pre-existent people? Evidently. Or we could say that between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, there's what they call the gap theory. That in the beginning, God did this, but there was a maybe thousands of year gap between that. And there seems to be a, a degree of truth about that. And then finally the Lord said, okay guys, let's make man. Let's make a man. <laughs> and this came to me, uh, is this. So God created the heavens and the earth and he created everything uh, uh, up until the sixth day. And he created animals, he created plants and so forth. He created animals. Evidently all the animals were created before we were. That's what the word says. So what was he doing? Maybe the, the group of, of, of the powers that were there said, hey, you go ahead, you go ahead, let, let's create some, some of these living creatures. And one, one of the Elohims comes up and said, look what, I, look what I came up with. What do you call it? An elephant? I don't have a name for it, but look at this thing. One of them comes up when he's got a rabbit, somebody, I don't know, I don't know, just crazy thoughts. But they all came from somewhere, and they're all different. And why would anybody want to create a crocodile? I don't know, but anyway. But finally, maybe the Lord was saying, hey, yeah, I see this, I see this, I see that. That's not it. There's something. No, that's not going to do it. I, I'm not going to fellowship with a giraffe. But he did have a, no, I, maybe I shouldn't say that. I'm not going to fellowship with that animal. No. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's make something in our own image. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he gathered up some of the dust from the earth, formed it. <sighs> Grew the breath of life into it, and man became a living soul. And the Lord said, Wow, I want a fellowship with him. And so he began fellowship with Adam. And then finally realized, hey, he needs a he needs some help here. Now help me. Okay. How are we gonna do this? Well, let's put him to sleep and we'll take a part of him and make a help that's meet or fit for him. This, this woman, this woe man will be perfectly formed to be the perfect, that they can be a perfect duality. They can be a perfect couple. They can walk together in agreement, love each other, 
And when they agree, nothing can stop them. Wow. That sounds, that's awesome. So he made man. And then he fellowship with this couple. And they didn't need clothes. They didn't need anything. How long that happened, I don't know. But we know the rest of the story. Was that in God's plan? Well, evidently. But I had to think of, about this. When God said, I'm going to withdraw myself from this man and see what he does. What? Yeah, I'm going to withdraw myself from his Hezekiah and see what he does. I want to see what's in his heart. Oh, you didn't know? And apparently, he didn't. And I've always said, I'm going back to this, and I could be wrong, and don't, I'm not trying to be in dogma here, that in his love and for his own being, what can I say? Does God have things that he enjoys? You ever thought about that? What are you doing, Father? Well, I, get, I enjoy this. You do? Yeah. Listen to this praise of these people. Look, it's coming out of their hearts. Wow. He's got things he enjoys. Obviously. And so, he made us that he can enjoy us. And so, what a joy it must be to him when he withdraws to see what we do and we come through like Job. Wow, look at Job. Okay, Satan, go ahead. Let's see. Let's see what he does. Job came through, and the Lord said, Whew, I'm going to bless you double. I'm proud of you, Job. Look what you did. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. You know, God is sovereign, I know, but he's also a loving being that wants fellowship Amen. with us. And the demons, it, may, it drives them crazy. You want a fellowship with that? Them? Yeah. But those, they call us clods. Clods of dirt. <laughs> Which we are. But what awesome things we are that God has made. Made from dirt? Yeah. And you want a fellowship with this? That's my heart's desire. But I want that fellowship to be what, what you might say voluntarily or whatever. I, I want this fellowship not to be that I've forced it, that they're scared to death of me, that they just worship me because of... Uh, uh, no. I want it to be agape. I want it to be supernatural like me. I want, I want them to choose and come to me that way. I'm going to leave it to them. Really? Yeah. So, after they fell, he waited a few hundred years, waiting to see what man would do. And along came, in the seventh generation, came a man called Enoch. Wow. And Enoch, I don't know why God didn't choose Enoch instead of Abraham. Hmm? You walk with God, and God said, I'm taking you. You walk with me. Wow. Well, God had a plan. Maybe Enoch was too perfect. I don't know. But here comes a man, and here in Chaldea, in this wicked pagan place, and he finds a man with his dad, and named Abram, and he says, I'm going to start here. 
I see this man's got a heart that's different. Well, we see the story. God finally had to say, okay, I'm going to give you my law. I'm going to, these people that have come out of his loins, I'm going to take them off out of this place and give them my law because my law is what I'm like. And I'm going to warn them that there's an enemy out there that I've allowed and that if you don't want to follow the way I am, then the enemy is going to have a door to come in and you'll, he'll operate against you with curses. Okay. That seems pretty simple, but we just won't do that. We will. We will serve you with joy, gladness of heart, and we will keep your laws. They said it. They didn't. They couldn't. So finally, I don't know how the Lord said, okay, I've got a better plan. I love this creation, these creatures so much, these humans that I've made. The only way that I'm going to be able to bring them to me and have fellowship with them. I'm going to have to go die for them. What? So in a way, what? In Jesus, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily. And he said, here I am. Crucify me. And I don't, still don't fully understand the dynamics. But God himself died for us. That he could save us, so to speak. So he could have eventual eternal relationship and fellowship with us. He wanted that. And so G Jesus came. He was one with the Father. And he said, here's what I'm come to do. Upon a solid rock, and an immovable thing, I'm going to build my ecclesia, a place for a gathering of my people that will come to me and believe in me. And the gates of hell, that right here, will not prevail. They'll not win. So I'm going to give them the uh, First of all, I'm going to regenerate them in their hearts. I'm going to give them the authority. And then I'm going to anoint them with my Holy Spirit that got loosed when I rose from the dead. And they're going to be supernatural people eventually that can stand in my very presence and be as holy as I am. And I'm going to get, look to them to destroy the works of the devil for the whole world. That's what church should be all about. But it's not. So what does God want? Why has he shown me this? Because of my heart for him. And here I sit with my issues. But he knows my heart. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to fight discouragement when it comes, and it does. And if I end up being the only one sitting in this room, it's going to be that way. Because I see I know that I see what he really wants. And thank God for you. And you folks out there, do we together see this? And then we decide we're going we're gonna to stay together. We're going we're gonna to forgive each other. We're, we're going to 
We're going to agape each other, and we're going to herald it to the demons. Yes, amen. No matter what. Because that's the thing that they hate the most, is our agape for one another. Amen. They will know that we're his disciples because we agape one another. Amen. Amen. So what else does he need to say to us this morning, huh? What else does he need to say? Here we are, Lord. Amen. Amen. What can we do for you? Just be obedient. Worship me, praise me. Remember to thank me. (laughs) That's all I want. Those that will worship me in spirit, and in truth. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen.